This is my cosmetically challenged 1997 Jeep Cherokee with the 4.0 inline six. Well, what I'm doing today is replacing, replacing the oil pressure sending unit, which is that longish thing right there. This one, the oil pressure is fluctuating all over the place. It's going from, uh, well, just all, it just keeps bouncing around. It's placement is actually quite problematic. That's how I've broken several of these is I've tried to leave that in place while getting the oil filter out. Now I take the oil pressure sending unit out before changing the oil filter and that has stopped me from breaking those when I'm changing the oil filter. The reason I have to change this one is I was doing something else. I was always doing something with the transmission and I was trying to reach down in there and I put a little too much pressure on the sending unit breaking it just enough to make it not read accurately. So to get this out, there is a clip right here for the electrical connector. You can see it, you just have to lift up on the, the end of the clip right there and sort of block your view because I don't have another way to do that. As you're lifting up on the clip, pull toward the back of the vehicle and that should pop right off. Now, there's a metal part on it there that's one and one sixteenths. That is, it fits a socket that is one and one sixteenth. We could get a wrench on there, but that's the difficult way to do it. The best way to do it is to get one of these sockets that's built specifically for this. I think it was around $10. And there's room enough inside that it will not damage the sensor unit when you use this tool. A regular socket doesn't have that kind of space in there. So it, it's worth a little bit to get the right tool for the job. So slide that on, then get a ratchet. Get back on there. Kind of trapped myself where I put the ratchet. There we go. All right. I'm trying to get out of your view. So just take the old one off, and just as a, it doesn't matter what this old one is going to be thrown away. But I'm really careful, I'm going to show you on the new one, I'm really careful about how I turn it. I always use this metal threaded part because that, I meant the metal uh, part that's designed for a socket to turn this thing. It's, it is one piece with the threaded part. So when you're turning it, there's no chance of damaging the connection between this plastic and the metal. Under no circumstances do I allow myself to grab the plastic part and turn it, even if it feels really loose. Even when I'm just getting the thread started, when I put this new one on, I will do it by holding the metal part. Because it's, it's relatively easy to damage these. This uh, tape on here is a Teflon tape. I'll see if I can find a link for that, too. The roll I have, I've had for many years. But I'll see if I can find a, a link to that on Amazon. All right, so now grab that socket and continue turning until the old one comes out. There it is. I can feel that the plastic and the metal are not completely tight anymore. So that one I'm going to throw away because it's giving really bad readings. Now, I have the new one, and again, I'm going to reach down there while holding the metal bit and get it started. Again, I'm going to be blocking in view. Okay, I just barely started that thing. Again, holding onto the metal. Now I'm going to slip the socket onto it. And continue doing what I can to get it hand tight. Now I'll slip the scratch it on and finish it off. That sounds gruesome. Not 
putting too much torque on this. Just want, want it to be tight. That should be good there. Oh, of course, drop the tool. I always do that. I see it though. Oh my god, I'm reaching past. Don't like reaching down past that sensor. Now I'm going to reconnect the wiring connector. And this is done. All I have to do is start the vehicle, check for leaks, and the gauge should be working again.